Hey, Brian with HVAC School here. Today I asked Jesse to make a video uh, about a heat pump system and go over a couple different things, but this particular video I wanted him to just cover the basics of a heat pump system, the different components, and how it all works. The biggest thing to know is, is that in a heat pump, you're taking heat from the outside and you're pumping it inside. I think that's probably where they got the name from. I don't know, it's kind of a weird name. You know, customers are always looking for the heat pump, that one component that pumps heat. Um, but really, it's an air conditioner. In an air conditioning mode, we're taking heat from the inside and we're moving it outside. And in a heat pump, we're taking heat from the outside and moving it inside. But he's gonna review with you a little bit more about how that actually works. Most of us understand in the cooling cycle how this operates. We're gonna have our liquid line coming through here, hitting our cool mode TXV, flash gas go through the expansion tubes, go through the evaporator coil, and at the end, we're coming out of our suction line um, as a superheated vapor, going back to the condensing unit, goes through the compressor, comes out as a hot gas, goes through the condensing coil, turns back into a liquid, and the whole cycle repeats. What a lot of us don't understand is the heat pump and how that works. So on a heat pump system, you're gonna have your standard components, your evaporator coil. In cool mode, this is gonna be your evaporator coil. In heat mode, this is going to be your condenser coil. Then you have your blower wheel housing, your blower motor, blower wheel, that's standard stuff. Here, you're going to have your blower board, and then you're going to have your heat strips. The heat strips on a carrier system are located here. Um, the design of the heat strips are to be used if the system cannot maintain the temperature in the space. So if the temperature is so cold outside, it's below the balance point for the heat pump portion of the air conditioner, then the heat strips will kick on in addition to the heat pump to create additional heating for the space. Also a function of the heat strips are when the system goes into defrost that allows the system to turn on the heat strips during the defrost cycle to prevent it cooling off in the space. All right, real quickly to kind of go along with what Jesse's saying, I want to show you the basic components of a heat pump. And in this case, we have our, you know, we have our outdoor coil and you can see it's coming from the compressor and it's going into the reversing valve and then out of the reversing valve to the outdoor coil. And then it turns into the liquid line. It bypasses the heating expansion valve or heating metering device on the carrier that we have here at our office. It has a piston on the outside. A lot of trains and Lennox heat pumps will have expansion valves. And even on the high-end carrier equipment, you'll have electronic expansion valves, but it bypasses this outside metering device and then goes inside and cools like normal. But when it goes into heat mode, the discharge gas, instead of it, you know, coming to going to the outdoor coil like it normally would, it instead goes to the indoor coil and the direction of flow changes. And when it goes to the indoor coil, so you have your discharge gas going to the indoor coil and then it bypasses the cooling expansion valve, goes through this check valve, goes the opposite way. So your liquid line has refrigerant traveling in the opposite direction and then is metered by the heating metering device, or in this case, it says heating cycle expansion valve. And then it goes in and now your outdoor coil becomes the evaporator coil, which then absorbs heat in. So evaporator coil absorbs heat in, outdoor coil or condensing coil rejects heat out. This would typically be the evaporator coil. This would typically be the condenser coil. But then when the cycle changes, then this becomes the evaporator coil. Heat goes in and then heat goes out of the indoor coil, which is now the condenser coil, which is appropriate because the what a heat pump does when it's in heat mode is it uses the compression refrigeration cycle to add heat to the space that's absorbed into the evaporator coil from outside. All right, so we are at the outdoor unit of our heat pump system. We're just gonna go over the basic components um, that are different opposed to a straight cool system. So on our heat pump equipment, we're going to have a reversing valve we're going to have a defrost board and we're going to have a common suction. Um, those are the three main things that are different from your traditional straight cool piece of equipment. Here is our defrost board right here. Down here, you are going to have your common suction port. It's kind of in between the two. I don't know if you can see that. And then inside, 
you will have the reversing valve. Let me pop off the top so you can see that. All right, so we have the top off here. So I'm gonna show you the reversing valve, which is right inside here. This is going to be our reversing valve. On some heat pump pieces of equipment, you will see this. This is called an accumulator. Here we have our compressor, our discharge line going through our discharge muffler. At that point, it's coming through here, entering our reversing valve. Based on whether or not the solenoid is energized, it's going to direct the flow. On a carrier piece of equipment, if it is energized and cooling, that case, say we're energized, it's gonna come in here, through here, on the right side, which comes up and around here into our outdoor coil. At that point, it's a hot discharge gas running through our condensing coil, subcooling it and turning it into a liquid. At that point, it's gonna go into the indoor unit, hit the metering device, go through the evaporator coil, come back on our suction line, come into our reversing valve. That being said, once it comes into our reversing valve, it's going to be directed down the center pipe, which is our common suction line. The center pipe on the reversing valve is always the suction or low side coming back to the compressor. That's going to flow through here into our accumulator. At that point, it comes back out into our suction line on the compressor. In heat mode, it's going to be opposite. So on heat mode, we'll go through the cycle again. Coming out of our compressor as a hot gas through our discharge muffler into our reversing valve. The solenoid's going to switch, forcing the refrigerant into the left side here, which is normally our suction line on the line set. So our hot discharge gas is going to go through our suction line. So our suction line out here is now going to be our discharge line. That's going to go into the inside unit. The inside unit is now going to act as our condensing coil. That point, it's going to cool the refrigerant down, causing it to turn into a liquid coming back on our normally liquid line. On a carrier system, you have a piston metering device that's going to be right in here. At this point, it's becoming a flash gas coming through here. We are now a flash gas through this, the capillary tubes into our outdoor coil. Our outdoor coil is now our evaporator coil. You're going to have the air running over it, gaining heat from the outside air. After it's gone through that whole cycle, it's going to be coming back on this portion into our reversing valve, back through the center, our suction line, coming up our suction line into our accumulator. After the accumulator, coming back through, back to our compressor, and the cycle will repeat. Okay, so here we have our defrost board. Um, a couple things to note, the outdoor fan motor hooks up to this relay. Um, you have your low voltage controls coming in here, your safeties here, and then this pink one is your defrost or your coil sensor. So this is sensing the coil temperature, letting the board know when it needs to go into defrost. If you trace this back on a carrier system here, you can see the defrost sensor connected to the outdoor coil right here. Again, if you follow these pink wires back, that's going to be testing the coil temperature periodically. Once this has become frozen cold enough, it's going to force the system into a defrost. When it goes into a defrost, a couple things happen. It sends 24 volt signal to our reversing valve, switching the cycles from heating to cooling. It's going to shut off the outdoor fan motor to allow the outdoor coil to defrost significantly quicker. And at the same time as it's doing all of that, we're going to be sending a 24 volt call on our white wire, which will activate our backup heating or our auxiliary heat strips to allow the space not to cool down too quickly. Hopefully it's just a neutral. You don't gain anything, you don't lose anything. Depending on the KW size of the heat strips will be a big factor in that. 